Would you pray with me? Gracious Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that we might hear what you would teach us today, that you are equipping us to become the people that you want us to be, that you might receive the honor and glory, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Well, we're going to explore the character trait of faithfulness today. Uh, The Bible is really full of stories of of people who were faithful to God. Uh, The 11th chapter of Hebrews, for example, in the New Testament, tells of many of those Old Testament um, heroes who demonstrated unprecedented faith and and loyalty uh, to God. We all know that uh, faithfulness and fidelity are expected in our relationships with our wives, with our husbands, our children, our parents, our employers, our employees, our our friends, and and people in general. Uh, The Bible includes faithfulness as one of the character traits of a follower. Uh, Faithfulness and fidelity are the cornerstones of relationships. Um, On the day that we meet Jesus face to face, uh, we're, we're not going to be judged on our business success or our educational achievements or even how much we've done in our community. The Bible says that we will be judged on how faithful we were to the commitments that we made to Christ and all that God has asked us to do in our lives. Faithfulness. It's the foundation of friendship. As, as Jesus said, we are to be his friends We don't tend to think of our relationship with Jesus as friendship. And if you're anything like me, you may wonder, well, how can can I be called a friend of Jesus? One of the most amazing truths of the gospel is that Jesus knows everything there is to know about us, and he still wants to consider us as his friends. Uh, And you have to admit, that really is pretty amazing when you think about that, that that the God of creation, the the Redeemer of the world, wants to call us his friends. And the reason is, Jesus sees this great potential in us that many of us don't believe even about ourselves. He sees promise in the worst of sinners, uh, and really he calls us to see that as well. Uh, That's what God intends for all of us. Jesus told his disciples, No longer do I call you servants, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. Jesus taught a a great deal about faithfulness. And today we're going to look at one of those parables that he uh, shared about being faithful. See, I don't know what what, uh, you're going through in your life right now, but what I know is that the the great creator um, only wants you to be faithful and obedient. Uh, And he's ready to provide each of us with whatever it takes to transform us into those faithful people that he wants us to be. He wants to give us what it takes to become faithful, obedient followers of Jesus Christ, um, to keep trusting him and, and to be assured that he does have a plan and a purpose for our lives. Here's what Jesus says in, in Matthew 25, beginning at verse 14. And again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a trip. He called uh, together his servants and gave them money to invest for him while he was gone. He gave five bags of gold to one, two bags of gold to another, and one bag of gold to the last, dividing it proportionally to their abilities, and then left on his trip. The servant who received five bags of gold immediately began to invest the money, and it soon doubled. The servant with two bags of gold went right to work and doubled the money. But the servant who had received one bag of gold dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money for safekeeping. After a long time, their master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they had used his money. The servant to whom he had entrusted five bags of gold said, Sir, you gave me five bags of gold to invest and I doubled that amount. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Next came the servant who had received the two bags of gold with the report, Sir, you gave me two bags of gold to invest, and I have doubled that amount. The master said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. 
You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Well, first and foremost, you know, our understanding of of faithfulness begins with one basic biblical truth, and that is that God is faithful. That God is is faithful. Uh, He's the best example of faithfulness Uh, He he will never break his promise to us. Paul reminds his his young friend Timothy that even if we are faithless, God will remain faithful. So for us, the, the first key to being faithful is to understand that our faithfulness is a matter of trust. Our faithfulness is a matter of trust. Perhaps the most difficult truth that we have to reckon with is that God can and wants to treat us as friends. He wants us to be his friends. In Isaiah 41, uh, verse 7, Abraham was called God's friend. Um, I think that's an amazing thought, that even in in the initial relationship with God, with, with what was to be the people of Israel, that God called Abraham a friend. And we all should should know, or or at least know, that that God does love us. Um, He desires a relationship with us. In fact, Jesus calls believers his children. But being God's friend is a different kind of relationship. It's unique in its level of trust and respect. James says that Abraham was called God's friend because he believed God and and he put his trust complete trust in him, and and God could count on him to be faithful in all that he asked him to do. So let's fast forward to today. Listen to what Jesus says to his disciples and and to all who would believe in in him because of their ministry, uh, which is you and me. He says, you are my friends if you obey me. I no longer call you servants because a master doesn't confide in his servants. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the Father told me. You didn't choose me, I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask using my name. Why did Jesus add the requirement, you are my friends if you obey me? If you obey me. See, I believe it's simply this, and that is, it is in our obedience, it's through our obedience that, we, that, that says we trust Jesus. By being obedient, we, we are trusting him. It, it, it's no coincidence that Abraham is lifted up both in the Old and the New Testament as an example of faithfulness because of his trust in God. Because of his trust in God. In in that parable in Matthew, Jesus made it clear that uh, those he trusted, those who trust in him will be given more responsibility. And the principle is simple. With trust comes responsibility. With trust comes responsibility. The more responsibility, uh, you know, more responsibility demonstrates the the level of trust uh, and the depth of one's friendship. If we expect to become the, the, the friend that God wants us to be, then our obedience becomes critical. The more we are obedient, the more God will entrust to us. And when we think of our friendships, you know, the, the deeper and the longer our, our friendships, the more we're willing to trust with those friends. So friendship is, is built on faithfulness, and faithfulness is built on trust. So the second key to re, the relationship, uh, our relationship to Christ is this. Faithfulness is keeping our commitments regardless of the personal cost. Faithfulness is keeping our commitments regardless of the personal cost. Faithfulness is not about convenience. Let me tell you why I can say that. In, in that same section of John's Gospel, Jesus says this. When you obey me, You remain in my love, just as I obey my Father and remain in his love. I have told you this so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. I command you to love each other in the same way that I love you. And here is how to measure it. The greatest love is shown when people lay down their lives for their friends. 
Jesus saw faithfulness as a sign of maturity, that we become mature, we, we grow, and we become faithful in that growing. And he described true friendship as unconditional. Friendship wasn't contingent upon whether or not those, those that we considered friend were treating us or, or acting right. We were unconditional in our uh, faithfulness. For, for Jesus, faith, uh, friendship is based on, on that faithfulness, and faithfulness is built on the trust, and trust is then demonstrated in our willingness to sacrifice whatever it takes for one's friend. Willingness to sacrifice for one friend. Matthew 25, Jesus explains what it means to, to give unconditionally. He says that uh, whatever you do to others, uh, we do to him. And about the final judgment, he says this, then the king will tell them, I assure you, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. You see, most of us are, are willing to, to uh, give up things for Jesus and, and to sacrifice much for his kingdom, but uh, don't expect me to give up my parking spot close to the door at Walmart when it's raining. You know, it's unrelated. To, uh, don't expect me to give up the last, last piece of Gretchen's pie that she made for me. You know. Don't expect me to give up my place in line after I've been here forever. And don't ask me to pay my full tithe before I take care of the things that I really need in my life. You get the idea. Most of us don't mind sacrificing for good causes. It's the lost causes that we have trouble sacrificing for. But Jesus was always about the lost causes. Faithfulness is sometimes being mature enough to be willing to to give up a lot for someone who doesn't even know that you're making the sacrifice. That's the heart of faithfulness. Proverbs 17, 17 says, a friend loves at all times, at all times. And the question Jesus asks us is this, who do you treat as your friend? Who do you treat as your friend? See, faithfulness is, is keeping our commitments to Jesus regardless of the personal cost and the sacrifice. And key number three is this. The Bible assures us that our reward for faithfulness is guaranteed. Our reward for faithfulness is guaranteed. Dependability, punctuality, being responsible, they're all part of the package of faithfulness. Jesus said, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. We are who we are, and and Jesus tells us that he knows who we are. And he's willing and able to, to transform us into the people that he wants us to be. But we have to be willing to invest in ourselves as much as Jesus was willing to invest in us. The life principle here is this. Only people who invest get a return. Only people who invest get a return. If you don't invest, you don't get a return. Jesus says in Matthew 25, 29, For everyone who has will be, will be given more. And he who... And he will have an abundance. For everyone who has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Farmers know that. They have to plant their seeds in faith and water it and take care of it. If they don't plant, they're, they're only going to have weeds in the field. We've all heard it in today's language, use it or lose it. Uh, the truth has its parallel in God's kingdom. When by faith we respond to his call and and his purpose for us and use what what he has given us, our abilities and our resources, when we use what what he has given, he will always supply what we need and more to accomplish his purpose. He'll always do that. Paul reminds us, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the, reward, from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. 
there, there's not one thing that we will give up for the sake of Christ or as a blessing for someone else that God will not bless us with in eternity. Key number three is simple. Our reward for faithfulness is guaranteed. It's guaranteed. So is it worth being faithful? Well, I think so. I, I, I believe that that's why it's on the list of the fruits of the Spirit, that the Holy Spirit is, is making us faithful. It's God's desire for us to become faithful people. I want to close with a story that Ray Stedman tells in his book, uh, Talking to My Father, and it shows the eternal results of faithfulness. An old missionary couple had been working in Africa for years, and, and they were returning to New York City to retire. They had no pension. Their health was broken. Uh, they were booked on the same ship as President Teddy Roosevelt, who was returning from one of his big game hunting experiences. No one paid any attention to them. They watched the fanfare that accompanied the president's entourage with passengers trying to catch a glimpse of the great man. As the ship moved across the ocean, the old missionary said to his wife, Something is wrong. Why should we have given our lives in faithful service to God in Africa all these many years and have no one care a thing about us? Here's, this man comes back from a hunting trip and, and everybody makes such, such over him. Nobody gives two hoots about us. Dear, you shouldn't feel that way, his wife said. I can't help it. It just doesn't seem right. When the ship docked in, in New York, a, a band was waiting to greet the president. The mayor and other dignitaries were there. The papers were full of the president's arrival, but no one noticed the missionary couple. They slipped off the ship and found a cheap flat on the east side, hoping the next day to see what they could do to make a living in the city. That night, the man's spirit was broken. He said to his wife, I can't take this. God isn't treating us fairly. And his wife replied, why don't you go to the bedroom and tell that to the Lord? Well, a short time later, he came out of the bedroom. Now his face was completely different. And his wife asked, dear, what, what happened? Well, the Lord settled it with me, he said. I told him how bitter I was that the president should receive this tremendous homecoming when no one met us as we returned home. And when I finished... It seemed as though the Lord put his hand on my shoulder and simply said, But you're not home yet. The reward for faithfulness is knowing that you've been obedient and that one day your friend Jesus will say to you, Well done, good and faithful servant. The promise is simple. Jesus says he's your friend. No longer do I call you servants, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. Faithfulness is a, characteristic, a character trait of a friend. And the Holy Spirit will develop it in every follower. Jesus will never leave you or forsake you. He is trustworthy. And the good news is, he can make you faithful. So when life doesn't seem fair, remember, you're not home yet. You're not home yet. Hang in there. Remain faithful. Because he will. Would you pray with me? Gracious Lord, at times... We admit that we're like the old missionary. But as we pause this day, we hear the witness of your spirit that reminds us simply, we're not home yet. Lord, we give you thanks that your Holy Spirit is transforming us and making us into the faithful people that you want us to be. Help us to see how critical that is in, in the testimony and the witness that we give into the world for you. That when we come home to be in your presence, we will hear those words, well done, 
good and faithful servant. Use us for your glory. Take our our insufficiencies and our inadequacies and transform them that we might be the people you want us to be. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen.